Now, conference, it's a great honour to make the closing speech uh, before our traditional anthems, to close the week just as John Prescott did back in the day, although I think I look better in a dress. <laughs> I hope we're doing proud today. I love the traditions of our movement, from the Durham Miners Gala to the Tollpuddle Martyrs Festival. But, but conference, <laughs> there's one part of our history that I will never celebrate, and that's losing elections. <laughs> Just think how it will feel meeting here in this hall in a few years' time after a term of a Labour government back in power. Now, conference, this is the Labour Party, so I've no doubt that we'll also be discussing how further we'd like to go once we've debated the CAC report for around 20 minutes. <laughs> but conference, what I will say, is when the Tories deliver 1% of what they promise, they talk endlessly about that 1%, and we never hear about the list of broken promises. When we deliver 99% of what we promise, we talk endlessly about the 1% we didn't instead. We set a high bar. But just think about the historic Labour governments and their legacy. They didn't please all of our movement all of the time, including me. But those Labour governments made history. The NHS, social security, the welfare state, council housing, modern higher education, the open university, decriminalising homosexuality, outlawing racial discrimination, introducing equal pay, the national minimum wage, sure start, devolution, the Good Friday Agreement, civil partnerships, equal pay act, the Human Rights Act and the world's first climate change act. And conference, if we're not proud of ourselves, don't expect anyone else to do it for us. And just think what that future party conference could have to celebrate. We've shown this week how different we'll be, not just in our vision, but with our plan for Britain, starting with the biggest challenge facing not just our country, but the world, We'll tackle the climate crisis head on. We will protect our people and our planet, and we will pull out all the stops to build a fairer and greener Britain. As Keir set out yesterday through our Green Prosperity Plan, we will unleash a green industrial revolution by reaching 100% uh, clean power by 2030, we will save £93 billion off energy bills. And through Great British Energy, we will give British power right back to the British people. At a conference I said on Sunday that a moment of choice is upon us. A moment to show the country that we are ready to govern. Well, conference, I know I'm a bit biased, but boy, do I think that we've shown that. <laughs> now, it isn't just that we have better policies although we do. It isn't just that we will be more competent, although we will. It's that our values differ fundamentally, 
and our policies are not better despite our values, but because of them. Labour values, the country's values too. <laughs> Yet too often, when it comes to elections, people feel that they have a choice of heart versus head. Values are competence. I say to those watching at home, this week we have shown it's a choice you will never have to make again. And this past week, the Tories have shown it too. The Conservative Party are no longer pretending to be competent and stable. Today's Tories will plunge us into chaos in pursuit of their dogma, divide the country to rule it. And regards rules as for you and not for them. <laughs> I mean, they said tough on crime. They brought crime to number 10. Yeah. Defenders of the free market, the market's in free fall. England's green and pleasant land, frack it. From the party of stability to causing earthquakes. From the party of business to a slap down from the IMF. From the party of serious government to the party of parties. Liz Truss has even crashed the pork market. Now that is a disgrace. <laughs> Now, you'd think that snouts in the trough was one of the things that they could manage. <laughs> when interest rates were low and borrowing was cheap, they sacrificed public services for austerity. Now they're borrowing just as interest rates are soaring. To think this was the party that claimed they were for sound money. That's what one high-flying New Tory MP certainly thought back in 2012, he wrote a pamphlet demanding a balanced budget every year. He said, fiscal prudence is the very least we should expect from a chancellor. And if they failed, they should face a 20% pay cut. I tell you what, that Tory MP must be absolutely furious with a new chancellor. Except he is the new Tory <laughs> Chancellor. <laughs> and you know what? I've got a funny feeling he won't be taking that pay cut either. Because you see, pay cuts are for other people. He won't even let the budget watchdog tell him just how much of our money he is handing over to the super rich. They used to say the Tories knew the value of nothing but the cost of everything. Now they don't even know that. Now the next election won't be a choice between a strong economy or a fair society. We don't have to choose one or the other because you can't have one without the other. An unequal economy is an inefficient one. It's perhaps the starkest difference between us and the Tories. Never again can we let them pretend that they are the patriotic party. I love my country. That's why I want so much better for it. But the Tories now think our biggest economic problem is you, the working people of Britain. And while they think you are the country's greatest weakness, we know that you are our greatest strength. And that's why Rachel and I will make the minimum wage a real living wage. Because we are not just the party of higher growth, 
but of higher wages too. Now we know what the Tories think. The new Prime Minister and her Chancellor have said it out loud. The problem is that British workers are idlers, not grafters. The irony from this lot. <laughs> Liz Truss says she doesn't like handouts, then handed £150 billion to the energy giants. They believe in handouts, all right. <laughs> and it's the same with their other top priority, unlimited bankers' bonuses. It's the same old Tory ideology. You incentivise the richest by giving them more money and you incentivise the rest of us by taking it away. Conference, it hasn't worked before and it won't wash now. <laughs> now I know they'd rather forget it, but we're now in 12 years into Tory government even if we are on our fourth Prime Minister. And where are they now? David Cameron, the privatised Prime Minister sold to Greensill. What was his greatest achievement? Fooling the Lib Dems. Not exactly a high bar. <laughs> if you care about power, for power's sake, and have no principles, no policies and no plan, you end up with a pointless premiership remembered only as a pub quiz answer. And then, of course, we had Theresa May. I remember her telling us that if you were a citizen of the world, you were a citizen of nowhere. If only we'd known about their green cards and tap, tax loopholes. Their politicians becoming like their donors, residents of everywhere, taxpayers of nowhere. <laughs> and then there's Boris Johnson. I do owe him one apology. I said he couldn't organise a booze up in a brewery. <laughs> Turns out he could organise a bruise up pretty much anywhere. Just a shame he couldn't organise anything else. <laughs> now we're a party with a serious plan. He had a plan for a serious party. <laughs> I'll miss one thing though. As inflation ran out of control, at least his jokes were one thing that got cheaper every week. <laughs> but the real problem wasn't that his jokes were so cheap, it was that his mistakes were so expensive. He ended his time claiming he was forced from office by the deep state. The only deep state that forced him from office was the one he left our country in. Sorry, conference. I had to use all of my Boris lines now while he's still remembered and while everyone knows who he is. <laughs> Before he becomes a footnote in the failure of the history books. <laughs> but con conference, at least that's what the new Prime Minister must be hoping for because he'll be sat on the back benches plotting his comeback with a glint in his eye thinking, I wasn't so bad after all, was I? <laughs> What a sorry state of affairs. <laughs> and what does Liz Truss have to say after a decade in government? Apparently, they were wrong all along. She's now asking for seven years to fix it, yet offering us even more of the ideology that caused the problems in the first place. She, just, she doesn't just think that we're lazy, she must think that we're stupid as well. And that brings me to this new government, openly chosen for loyalty, not ability, a ministry of all the talentless. <laughs> Frankly, conference, when I looked at the benches opposite last week, I thought the clowns had escaped the circus. Not so much flying circus, a lying circus.
Now, maybe I'm being unfair. My new opposite number, her first act was to get to grips with the real crisis in our NHS, the spread of a new and dangerous contagion, not the Omicron variant, the Oxford comma. <laughs> now that's a comma before the word and, in case you were wondering. Something like this sentence, GPs are overwhelmed, ambulances not turning up, beds are full, waiting times are rocketing, the NHS is starved of investment, and it's all the fault of the Tory decisions. <laughs> now, it'll take a Labour government to put that right. So here's another sentence that Therese Coffey won't like. A Labour government will double the number of district nurses, train 5,000 new health visitors, create 10,000 nursing places, double the number of medical students, and we will pay for it by reversing your handouts to the wealthiest few. Like every dot and comma of that policy conference. <laughs> and what a contrast to the government you've seen this week. Yesterday, the country saw the care that I know and see every day, announcing 100% clean power by 2030, driven by a British energy company owned by the British people for the British people. He showed the true, real leadership this country needs. And on Monday, Rachel showed how Labour would govern with competence, class and care. With her as the UK's first ever female Chancellor. <laughs> Setting out our National Wealth Fund to give the British public a share of the wealth that they create. And a genuine living wage that matches the cost of living. And I just want to thank my own front bench team, Rachel, Justin, Imran and Flo and Fleur, for all that they have done. We have set out our five-point plan for national procurement to tackle waste, sleaze and lies and unleash the power of public spending. Our fair work standard to raise working conditions across the economy alongside our New Deal for Working People, and we haven't stopped there. Our whole Shadow Cabinet has shown we are a team with a plan. 70% home ownership, our renters' charter, a clamp down on buy-to-let. Council housing, council housing, council housing. <laughs> The Hillsborough Law, a domestic abuse register and a new football regulator. Sewerage sanctions, job centre reform and a transformational industrial strategy. Insulation, innovation, inspiration, all in one. thousand more police officers to keep our communities safe. New Navy ships built by unionised workers in British shipyards. Closing the tax break for private schools to fund education for all. Free school breakfasts for children. New bus services in public hands. And as contracts expire, restoring public ownership of the railways. <laughs> 
conference, our shadow cabinet has shown what a Labour government will be. Radical, responsible, realistic. But delivering this message would be absolutely impossible without all of you. Our brilliant activists who campaign through the wind and the rain, and that's just outside this building. <laughs> if you ever needed proof that an onshore wind farm can deliver, get outside the Pullman. Now, I have too many people to thank, but I want to mention our brilliant chair, Alice Perry, standing down from the NEC. <laughs> and Diana Holland, who is stepping down as party treasurer after 12 years. We all owe her a debt of gratitude. We could probably do with her also in the, in the Chancellor's office as well. And finally, a thank you to Liverpool for hosting our conference. <laughs> now, while the Tories would be ashamed to show their face here, you've shown us the warmth and the pride that defines this city. Conference this week, we have shown how together we will transform this country. And the depth and the talent across our whole party. And we've come together to honour our history as only Labour can. Be in no doubt, the times ahead are going to be tough. But now let's rise to the moment and deliver for working people of Britain. Let's build a fairer, greener future with a Labour government in power once again. Thank you.